Police in Uganda said Sunday they had detained a 28-year-old man entering a church in the capital Kampala with an explosive device he planned to use for an attack there. Authorities were hunting three other men also believed to have been sent on similar bombing missions elsewhere in Uganda, police said. The motives were unclear, but the Islamic State linked allied democratic forces ADF has previously carried out deadly bomb attacks in Uganda. ADF was originally a Ugandan rebel group but was rooted more than two decades ago and fled into the jungles of Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo where it has since been based. The suspect identified as Kintu Ibrahim was detained as he was about to enter a Pentecost church Rubaga Milako Center in the Rubaga suburb of South Kampala. Police spokesperson Patrick Onyango told journalists security personnel had picked up intelligence about attacks planned on places of worship and that they had tracked Ibrahim. Onyango said the suspect had a bug with an improvised explosive device which police detonated safely during interrogation, Onyango said. He confessed he had three accomplices who had also been sent to carry out similar attacks. Zimbabwe President Emerson Unagagwa will be inaugurated today Monday after being declared winner of the August 23 elections over opposition candidate Nelson Chamisa. But many international observers, including the Southern African Development Community, SADC, say the elections did not meet regional guidelines governing democratic elections. Ibo Mandeza is a researcher at the Southern Africa Political Economy series. He and his colleague Tony Rilo have petitioned SADC and the African Union to support the idea of a transitional government in Zimbabwe to end what they call political impasse. Mandeza tells me that such a government must be supervised by eminent persons named by SADC. The document states three things. The first is that we say the election was largely uh, flawed. And we agree that under normal circumstances, it was declared null and void. The irregularities were so blatant. And the SADC report, therefore, in our view, is correct. As in fact, all the observer reports returned a negative verdict on the election. The second thing that we state in our document is that we differ with the opposition movement, Triple C. We are calling for a rerun. We are saying it's futile to have a rerun when the same conditions that have yielded negative results over the years remain in place. So there's need for reform. And therefore, we have always proposed ever since 2016, some of us, that only a transitional government made up of the main political parties, ZANU-PF and C, but also the smaller parties and civic society. And the third thing we're saying is that the transitional government must be mediated or must be an outcome of the mediation of eminent persons uh, being former presidents. And we are saying that the major task of the transitional government would be to initiate a reform agenda on the political front, in particular to restore constitutionalism. But President uh, Nagagwa and the ruling ZANU-PF say that the elections were free and fair and that proposals like yours are inviting trouble in Zimbabwe. They didn't say that. There's been no rejection of our petition by anybody. What I mean is that they say that the elections were free and fair. If that is the case, then why have a transition government? Well, I mean, they're bound to say that. But they, they are in a, in a spot in the sense that under the SADC protocol, the election has been condemned. And even though the inauguration is going through, it's clear that the SADC report is a subject of discussion in SADC itself. I should remind you that the same thing happened in 2008, where elections were stolen. In fact, Mugabe lost the election and uh, proceeded to engineer a runoff. And Mugabe was hurriedly sworn in before the AU summit to discuss the Zimbabwe crisis. And uh, you know what happened. A GNU was instituted soon after that. So what I'm saying, basically, it is possible that, in my view, the only way forward is the transitional government. Once again, as I said, your, your proposal is very interesting. But let me ask you also, why have elections, therefore, if the losing candidate would be requesting a transitional government? Well, I, I don't know what the position of the losing candidate is, uh, if there is a losing candidate. We are not picked on behalf of the opposition, by the way. 
This is a non-partisan initiative which is seeking to draw and develop a consensus, a national consensus in the country. Ibo Mendaza is a researcher at the Southern Africa Political Economy Series. He was speaking with me from Horare. As you just heard in our previous report, Zimbabwe President Emerson Mnagagwa will be inaugurated today, Monday. Reporter Rutendo Manwere in Horare asked some Zimbabweans for their thoughts about today's occasion. We are not really as excited as uh, we were in 2018. At this point, as the Harare Residents Trust, we expect that the president and his team are revolutionary in their approaches, that they take a no-nonsense approach to addressing the inefficiencies in the economy. I was one of the voters in the city and I had to endure very long hours standing in a queue. I feel that um, we were denied chances to actually vote for the candidate of our choice. So the inauguration is not anything exciting. It is inauguration of someone that we feel is a cheat. There is nothing to celebrate on EG's inauguration tomorrow because Munangagwa stole the will of the people on the 23rd of August. If Munangagwa had clearly won the election like what he said, would have seen millions of people in the streets celebrating his victory, the 52% that he claims, but no one is celebrating. So my big question to Mr. Mnangagwa, who voted for you when there's no one is celebrating your victory? I don't feel any excitement about the event since he was the previous elected president for the past five years. So we didn't benefit much from him, especially us as youth. As youth, we are still struggling to find jobs. The views of some Zimbabweans about today's inauguration of President Emerson Mnangagwa. Gabon's military strongman, General Bryce Ngema, will be sworn in today, Monday, as the country's new leader after overthrowing President Ali Bongo Undimba last Wednesday and placing him under house arrest. The general reopened the country's borders over the weekend. He said he will not repeat past mistakes by rushing to hold election. Frank Jogting is a Gabonese human rights and democracy activist. He tells me that... Uh, Civil society is so far satisfied with General Mgwema's promises, including rewriting the country's 1991 constitution to better serve the people and restrict his time in office to no more than two years. The latest is that the military took power and uh, now they are trying to talk to everybody. So the civil society, they're talking also to the politicians, they're talking to whoever is interesting in the well-being of Gabon and the well-being of the Gabonese people. And from there, they are trying to redo the constitution. If I heard them carefully, they tried to pick up the constitution of 1991, but they're going to adjust it a little bit better in order to make sure that no one will take advantage or will twist it or change it the way that they've been changing the couple of years for personal interest. And so it seems that the country is calm. The people are still rejoicing because, like I said, we've been under the rule of one family for uh, almost five decades. They find 500 billions of uh, franc CFA that they were able to recover. So he promised that he will take care of their retired people because in Gabon, uh, for those couple of months, people who retired were not paid their due. So he said that that's the first thing he's going to do on Monday. Now there's a lot of going on, but uh, I'm uh, hoping that everything will continue to go well and that the government's people in the long run will be satisfied. So, as we said, the military leader will be sworn in on Monday. He said over the weekend that uh, he will not be rushed to get to elections, even though everyone, including the African Union, are saying that uh, the military needs to turn the country over to democratic rule. It seems to me what you're saying, there's some satisfaction among you, the civil society and opposition people based on his promises? Well, I think the civil society are satisfied. I don't know if the opposition is satisfied, but like he said, right now there is no majority and there is no opposition. We are all Gabonese, and what he's trying to do is that he's trying to put back Gabon to his feet because everything has been really neglected. I know also that he said that he will not be rushed, but at the same time, he said that he's not interested in governing Gabon per se, but he's interested in putting Gabon 
Gabon back on track. And as soon as that process is going to be done, what I'm hearing is two years max, minimum a year. So you need that time in order to give it back to civilians. And the other things that I want to say is that the army is supposed to protect a nation and it's supposed to protect the goods of that nation. I think he's conscious of that. So even though he will have a year or two years to do whatever he wants to do, I think that there will be some politician involved. There will be civil society also involved. So I don't think it's the army that will govern on those one or two years alone. Frank Joctin is a Gabonese human rights and democracy activist. He was speaking with me from